Man, got around. OG7 back here. And today, I have tales of victory and glory that will demonstrate how to live according to beast mode law by adapting a savage mindset to view things from a barbaric perspective in our modern psyop times. Hey guys, just based on the experiences I've had and the uh, amount of videos that I've been researching about prison and prison experiences that happen to square guys, man, law by citizens that get caught up in the legal system. And just with our changing society and times, I've decided, man, to uh, come up with a series, man, of what it's called is the five things you must do in prison to prevent getting raped. And what's important, guys, is uh, I put these in the order of how you should execute them, not in the order of importance, because they're all equally important, dude. And what's important is you got to do this from the very time that you are incarcerated and arrested. So without further ado, I want to go into the first one. And the first one is, you must be aware. And now, it's not what you people think, man. It's not what you guys think. It's that simple of just being aware. What does that mean, being aware? I want to break it down for you because I think what I want to start doing in my videos is become very succinct and factual and to the point, demonstrating the types of behaviors you must use in order to be successful and being safe in prison, incarcerated. And I bring this up because I wanted to share with you guys something. I think when you think about the whole incarceration thing, just think of it from your perspective for a second. Don't think of it about like from being a criminal or a gang member or, you know, um, a person that does crime. Think of it from a law abiding citizen and think to yourself, what is the most, the scariest thing that you can imagine happening when you go to prison? And the reason I bring this up uh, this weekend, yesterday, matter of fact, I did some Eskrima training, which is some Filipino martial arts with, uh, uh, one retired police officer. He's a gang police for. He's a gang task officer for 20 years, or whatever. Filipino dude from the from the Philippines came over here, and you know, military. And he's a police officer, and then uh, a reserve police officer who's a gang task force guy as well. And uh, <laughs> it was funny, man, because uh, we were just talking about you know incarceration. Right. And just so you know, those guys don't know I've been incarcerated because I have a different persona when I'm around officials. So the, they both agreed, you know, and then there's a group of uh, 10 other guys, too, that just trained with us. And they all agreed that the, 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 the number one most scariest thing when a guy, a square dude, thinks about being incarcerated is having his his anus violated, dude. That is the number one concern. Even over the loss of freedom, which was number two, and the loss of female interaction, which was number three. Extortion was way down at the bottom of the list, right? Because when, if, if you're a square guy, you have money, you go to prison. Man, it's not a problem for you to pay some big, strong, barbaric dude, man, to protect you, bro. I mean, it happens on the street. It happens in life, right? That's why I got bodyguards, man, and, and protectors, executive... Um, protection services right people pay to be safe dude so that was way down on the bottom of the list but the number one concern for these guys who are really macho tough guys that know martial arts man the number one concern was having their anus violated forcefully and if you're a heterosexual dude that's the furthest thing that you can imagine happening to you so let me get straight into the the order of the things you must do, and they're all equally important. But number one, you got to be aware. And when I say be aware is from the time you're incarcerated, you want to be alert to everything that is going on. You want to be like a child, like they say in the Bible, have the viewpoint of a child, just be open-minded and curious because you're about to experience um, an environment dude, that is so far different from what you can imagine dude and you guys wonder why i have duplicitous behavior and i'm crazy and i'm on psych meds and all this dude what you experience in prison dude, everybody's not built to experience that it reminds me of the movie hellraiser so anyway that's very important you got to be aware but you have to be aware in a way that you're alert to everything that's going on 
and the whole key is you don't you can't make it obvious so you just want to be like you know when you're when you're a tourist dude and you're just in a strange country and you're like a, in a shady environment like a shady neighborhood you know you just kind of casually look around taking it all in but be a be a be aware be alert to everything that's going on be present in the moment of your incarceration. I think a lot of guys, like a lot of square dudes, like you see in the movie, Shim Shank Reduction or Shank Shaw Redemption, or even An Innocent Man, which is my two favorite square movies, dude. Is they're in denial and they're in, the, they're in this, they're in their head of like, oh, you know, I'm gonna get out of here and you know, I'm gonna do an appeal and I'm gonna contact my lawyer. And they're thinking about all, they're preoccupied. You cannot be preoccupied. You have to be alert, aware, be present in the moment, what you're feeling, the fear, the anxiety, and then put on a poker face and just kind of be aware, be alert, look around what's going on, be present in that moment. You got all the time in the world when you're in your cell by yourself. See, I think what was great for me, the shoe program, segregated housing unit, which was a sanctuary for me because once they shut the door and lock it, I know for at least eight hours, I'm, I'm protected by the four walls and the metal. I don't have to deal with anybody but myself. That's the time you go into your your sadness and your crying and your confusion and, you know, all these mental uh, machinations you're going through in your head of, oh, I got to find the pill. I got to contact this person. You do all that when you're locked up by yourself. But when you're out in GP, general population, bro, you got to be on your P's and Q's. The next one, man, is you want to be aware of your surroundings, dude. You want to take in the building structure, dude. Don't walk too close to the tier, because when I was at level three, four, and five, the tiers go up high, fifth tier. And look at them like stories. And, dude, there's no guardrail, bro. <laughs> you know, this is a little rail, but there's no fence. You would think there would be a fence. And I've seen many inmates get thrown over the tier. So I always, when I walked, I walked close to the cells. I never walked. Um, by the rail so you want to be aware of your surroundings and the flow of things you want to see how things go and if you go back to that um that andy video that i played from uh after prison show the the, the caucasian little caucasian dude that got raped brutally by six caucasian guys right he wasn't aware of the flow of things how things flow prison has a flow you know whether it's child time or yard time or work time whatever you just want to kind of blend in and go with the flow, right? You want to be aware of people, dude. This, I think this is one of the most important keys I want to bring out to you. You want to people watch. Become a people watcher, dude. And you want to have what's called a stoic face or a poker face, bro. And you can't show any emotions in prison. I'm sharing. I'm giving you guys, like, dude, all the game that I've learned over the 10 years, the five different prisons, all the fights and the loneliness I experienced, bro. You got to have to poker face a stoic mentality, show no emotions, and just people watch. Dude, watch everybody and study them from the way they walk to the way they dress to the way they carry themselves, who they're associated with, who they're affiliated with. Watch what's going on without being obvious because you don't want to stare at people in prison, man. The next thing, you want to become a student of human behavior. Like, dude, you have to very quickly start assessing people's character their intentions, dude, what they're about, bro. Because in my opinion, <laughs> nobody in prison is your friend, you know. That's just my opinion. You got to keep everybody at arm's length, dude, but not be too obvious about it. You know, you got to be, like, really cool. You got to be like this dude, cool hand Luke, man. You just got to keep your poker face, dude. You know, you never show your hand, right? And here's, a uh, last but not least, you got to be calm and cool, as you assess people's character, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, dude, when I went to prison, I had a lot of fear of what was going to happen. And here's why I had fear. It's not what you're thinking. I had a lot of fear, and I just want to be honest with you, and I know there's not a statute of limitation, but I shot a lot of people, dude. And um, what's interesting, dude, in, in uh, impoverished areas, not just California, there's a lot of murders that go on, dude, that don't that aren't solved, you know what I mean? Because it's just a lot of crime in our country, America, you know, in the impoverished areas. That's why I try to be more to the affluent areas now. But it's like, dude, there's so many unsolved crimes, bro. And just when you're in drug trafficking, bro, that whole rising up through the ranks, bro, I shot a lot of people, bro. And I was just a loose cat. I was on drugs, and I talked to one of the 
another guy, a trained martial arts with. He's a psychiatrist, man. Uh, you know, I seek counsel. And he was asking me what it was like when I was on drugs. And I was just like, dude, all I thought about was getting drugs, bro. And I didn't, I didn't value human life. I didn't value my life. I didn't value anything. And so ba basically what I just, I had to do anything to get, when I say anything, I don't mean sexual favors, but I'm talking about, dude, if I had to rob somebody, pistol whip them, um, kidnapping, whatever, hostage situations, I'm going to get the drugs. And so I shot a lot of people. And I had the fear of retaliation because when you're on the street, bro, you can duck and dodge and evade and detour and all this stuff. But in prison, man, there's nowhere to hide and there's nowhere to run. And the guards are not your friend. Matter of fact, you got to watch out for the guards more than anybody.